So, Lauren says that she's losing too many games, middle game, end game. Um, <clears throat> just a quick note, Lauren, I know that you're not necessarily here for this particular piece of advice, but um, having um, played bishop d3 here, I would be tempted to play c5 and stir it towards an IQP because the bishop generally doesn't stand well on d3. Just saying. Yeah, so c5. Thank you, Kaidin Space. That same applies for my YouTube content, yeah? Um, so c5 would be my choice here rather than c6, but uh, that's just a personal preference. It's not an objective evaluation. I know. And again, as a personal preference, I would keep the queen. I mean, to me, queen b3 here makes absolutely zero sense, like none whatsoever. Um, and I don't understand why we are engaging with that. Because in general, in Karlsbad structures, you are supposed to play knight e4 and play on the king side. Whereas they are meant to be playing for a minority to attack, right? So when they played queen b3, they real hardcore slapped themselves in the face. Right? So when queen b3 landed on the board, I would have been like, what? Well, thank you. Because if I was white, I would play here queen c2. That's how bad queen b3 is. And so why wouldn't you just carry on with regular Kasbad ideas of bishop d6, rook e8, chuck the knight on e4 and uh, do your kingside shenanigans. So I would label this um, as a major strategic misunderstanding of the position. Um, yeah. Most definitely. And when you say that you are not good with these structures, I don't exactly know what you mean by that because I'm pretty sure that you know that in the cast, but white is meant to do a minority attack, right? So when queen b3 hit, you must have gone like, what on earth is this guy doing? Anyway, let's uh, quickly roll on. Um, also instinctively, I would take it back with the pawn without a second hesitation. Yeah, I'm very puzzled about why knight. I would definitely take with the pawn and then play b5, b4 and uh, utilize the a5 pressure. From what I am seeing so far, Lauren, about this whole thing is that you have a massive disconnect from the opening you are playing. I would uh, either consider studying this more deeply or abandoning it right away, one or the other. Um, okay, back, back, back. Take, take is good here. Yep. Um... And uh, at this point, I would start thinking about how to bite into this. And my answer to that would be a f6. f6 right here, right now. Yeah, I get the, you know, the, to just get a position and play, but... What I'm saying is, is that there is a, a weird logical flow here because if you don't know the theory but you understand that white is meant to play b4, b5, then surely queen b3 would have raised the alarms already that this is just odd, to say the least. So here I'm afraid that um, it's not only lack of theoretical knowledge but the basics of who is playing for what is missing. Likewise here, this is a fundamentally... It's not even opening concept, it's it's a strategic concept that here you have b5, b4 and an a-file, which is far more preferable to the stock standard, oh, I didn't want my pawns doubled because someone said somewhere, never ever, the double pawns are bad. Anyway, um, yeah, I would have liked to see f6 here to eliminate this thorn, but knight c5 is fine. Now here I would really like to see f5. Or f6 again to deal with this pawn majority and f5 is really cool with the idea of then creating a blockade 
and then roll the pawns up. The ugliest move that you can play here in my book is the move that was played, which is b5. This I really, 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 really dislike because A, I don't understand what it does. Two, it creates a backward pawn. Three, it makes your pawn structure immensely rigid. So in positional sense, if you saw, if you show this move to a higher rated player, they will be immediately like, don't do that before they even could formulate a sentence as to why not. It's just such an eyesore of a move that you just go like, no, you get blockaded. There is a knight coming in here. The pawns become rigid. C6 is backward. This is really, really uh, an ugly move. And then, by the way, in strong contrast, I would have considered A5, which would stop B4 and allow you to gain a bit of a, a, a bit of space on the queen side. Um, and then again, still play for f6 to free up the king side slash center. Okay, knight e2, f6. I like it a lot. Bishop c3 takes very good. Oh my. Okay. Why? Why are we playing rook e8? Oh no. Why is that a move? Funnily enough, the engine loves it, by the way. I don't know why we just don't either trade and trade, 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 or just play a developing move. Oh, wait, this is not the game. Shoot, okay. Sorry, thank you for the sharp eyes. This is what was played. Yes. I got excited by the good moves. I'm like, wait, that was good, that was good, that was good, and then not so good. Okay, I get it now. So B5 was played, B4, knight back, knight back. A4 looks very good here already. Yeah, the good, good, good was not played. Okay, knight B6, knight D4. Yeah, so this structure is a bit of a reason why I said that B5 was an eyesore, because now your pawn majority is uh, immobile. Bishop c3. Yeah. Maybe it was the time to buy the bullet and play c5. Maybe. But knight c4 makes a lot of sense too. Whoa! Hello? There is this, there is this. Yeah, c5 is a tough one to find here. c5 is a tough one, <clears throat> but I think it's best. Take, take. And now you are threatening to win with b4. And all of a sudden, all the black pieces come to life like mad. 93 should be good too, though. Yeah. So here you need to find some strategically deep ideas such as a5. With the idea of now the pawns are going to roll like crazy. Take c5, d4, c4, get a out of my game, get out of my game, and so on. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this. Like, you did not have to take this because you had so much more pressure to put on your opponent. Yeah, this this is very logical here because it frees up the disaster that you have caused to yourself with earlier B5. So this fixes the problem that you created. Yeah, I think you were unaware of the the uh, the dynamic potential of the position. A5, A3 uh, allows you to just, uh, that's the point, take, 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 and just uh, mow down the board like this. Yeah, I feel like, Lauren, your your thinking is uh, is very static in many positions or, yeah, you seem to be unaware of dynamic factors a bit too much. That being said, again, we're completely killing it. C5, yeah, great, great. King of one, Lord, save us. And now just bring the rooks. Mm. Okay. Oh no, why, 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 why don't we bring the rookie? A rookie, a rookie, and that's a rookie error, a5, and now you just roll, roll, roll. 
Yeah, superficial is a good word there. I really dislike this trade. The engine likes it because you get to keep the pawn, but it makes your win a little bit complicated. And actually, the engine reckons this is pretty face. And a5 was the way to go. Huh. If that video was harsh, buddy, you haven't seen some other videos that I have put out, if you consider that one harsh. Now, again, it seems to me that we are missing a tactic. Well, see, Laurent, this is where there is a very interesting discussion to be had. Or if you had a coach, uh, and if it was me, that, that would be actually not pretty, because I would tell you that, actually, hang on a second, it was handed to you on a platter. It is right there. You don't get it more handed to you than, oi, A5. So for your level of chess, I would argue that it was given to you on a platter. You did not need to take it. It was right there. If I compare other aspects of your chess strength, or the other areas of your chess strength, or just your chess strength in general, I would say that this is handed to you on a platter. Um, but uh, obviously, it, it's uh, when you see it, it's obvious. When you don't see it, it's not there at all type of argument. So I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Um, okay, I don't know why you are engaging with this. So you have got 228 on the clock. And this is a typical, typical, typical case of a lower rated or club level players panic when they go like, oh, sheesh, I did not see this. And they are like, engage, 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 instead of going like, okay, what's the threat? Well, they are not threatening to take. And E7 is not going to exactly kill you either. So um, what's the big de deal here? Like, you can easily play an ugly move like f6 to kill the bishop. And if they play e7, you can start either rook c8 or rook e8, followed by king f7. And yes, this is not pretty, but actually we are clearly better here. But when people get hit by something like this, they become immensely irrational. And they can't seem to remain calm under the pressure of what is the threat. And maybe you can say that bishop, F, bishop c5 is a threat. We, we can make a case for that. Although here the engine recommends a4, so apparently even this is not a threat because you just sacked the exchange and black is actually better. So the repeatedly asked, what's the threat, <clears throat> is going to allow you to find so many good moves. No. Uh, you are on 2.28. I just checked your clock. That's exactly the first thing I did because, uh, yeah, being a seasoned coach, I look for reasons of blunders of this magnitude. And the first thing I would do is to look at your clock. 2.28. In fact, you spent one second on it. That's what you meant, maybe. Oh, yeah, which is precisely my point. That in a crisis situation like this, you need to spend a lot more time than that, especially... If you thought you had blundered, which is what you thought. 